真佛佛，真呀，人民真佛，今天真你啦。建设、富强、民主、文明、和谐、美丽的社会主义现代化强国，努力奋斗。Revolution, China had reached a turning point. From senior officials to ordinary people, everyone was eagerly anticipating change. In a historic move, the third plenary session of the 11th CPC Central Committee shifted the country's focus to economic construction and adopted the policy of reform and opening up. This marked a turning point of historic significance for the party and nation. It launched China on the path to economic reform, opening to the outside world, and socialist modernization. After 30 years of unremitting hard work, the People's Republic had secured the material and technological basis from which to launch this program. It had also acquired the necessary experience. Now the country faced the great challenge of further developing and building socialism. The reform and opening up mobilized the population, accelerated the emancipation and development of the social productive forces, and helped China catch up rapidly with the rest of the world. These changes had a profound impact, not only on China, but also internationally. History has shown that the reform and opening up as the sole path along which socialism with Chinese characteristics could develop was vital in allowing the party and people to catch up with the rest of the world. The choice was decisive to the fate of modern China and to realizing the two centenary goals and the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. In 1976, the Year of the Dragon was a momentous year in the history of the Chinese nation. On October the 6th that year, thanks to resolute action by the CPC Central Committee, the Gang of Four was crushed. Ten years of chaos were brought to an end and the whole nation celebrated. The toasting song was written by Han Wei from the Tianjin Song and Dance Theatre. That day, he and his colleagues had attended a parade. On their return, they found food and a bottle of Baijiu liquor on each table in their canteen. Han didn't normally touch liquor, but on that occasion he celebrated with his colleagues. After several toasts, he improvised a poem. His colleagues loved it and urged him to turn it into a song. Han wrote the first draft that same night. His old partner, the composer, Shi Guangnan, wrote the melody. 
Fisher never touched alcohol, but it was said that the resulting song, that it was intoxicating. The song touched people's hearts. It dispersed the clouds that had hung over them and described the good life that awaited them. The third plenary session of the 10th CPC Central Committee was held in July 1977. It saw the return of 72-year-old Deng Xiaoping. On July the 30th, 1977, Deng Xiaoping appeared in the stands at the Workers' Stadium in Beijing during the football match. A Japanese reporter describing the scene wrote, Instantly, the tens of thousands of spectators looked away from the match and stood up, applauding him warmly. Deng had decided to take personal charge of technology and education work, as he believed this was the key to setting the country on the right track. On August the 4th, 1977, he presided over a forum on science and education. At it, several scholars demanded that the college entrance examination be restored. The minutes of the meeting were, for many years, hidden away in the archives of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. They reflect the sense of urgency and determination to set things right that prevailed at the meeting. It was proposed that, in deciding who should attend university, students should register voluntarily, receive permission from their work unit, take a unified test and be admitted based on their score. Deng Xiaoping decided to do away with the phrase, receive permission from their work unit. Subsequently, the college entrance exam was reinstated after an 11-year hiatus. That year, 5.4 million people signed up for the exam. Of them, 270,000 would be successful. Shijao 陆一号是不是就是我的第一志愿中国医科大学我就像在做梦一样，不敢相信我进了大学。我在穿大走，我都不相信这是梦啊，是现实。我在想掐自己一把，就那么那种心情。In March 1978, with the spring sun on their faces, the 270,000 new students arrived on campus, ready to start a new life.
And so the sound of students reciting their homework returned to campuses across China. The restoration of the college entrance exam ignited young people's desire to learn and their passion for science. In March 1978, 5,500 representatives attended the first National Science Conference in Beijing. Old friends, former classmates, teachers and students were reunited. After a decade or more apart, emotions were running high. Sen 同时天运的劳动地 The writer Ma Shi Tu described the reaction to the speech. He received a huge round of applause when he described science and technology as productive forces. Greater applause for saying that scientists are working and particularly enthusiastic applause for they are part of the working class. And when he said, I am willing to be your director of support services, the applause was loud and prolonged. Deng Xiaoping's reasoned assessment of them fully resonated with China's intellectuals. Xiaoping it was the first national science conference since 1949. 86-year-old Guo Mo Ro, the director of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, defied illness to attend. He wrote a short celebratory poem after the meeting. This is the spring of revolution, the spring of the people, the spring of science. Let us embrace this spring with open arms. However, spring still hadn't quite arrived. Historical progress can sometimes be subjected to tremendous inertia. China needed to change track quickly. But the two whatevers, which called on people to closely follow Mao Zedong's decisions, were becoming a serious impediment to people's forward thinking. Deng Xiaoping still had not returned to a position of leadership. But in a letter to the CPC Central Committee, he wrote, 
From generation to generation, we should take genuine Mao Zedong thought as an integral whole and apply it in guiding our party, our army, and our people. He added, however, that the two whatevers do not accord with Marxism. On May the 10th, 1978, the Central Party School publication, Trends in Theory, carried an essay authorized by Hu Yaobang. It was titled, Practice is the Sole Criterion for Testing Truth. The next day, it was released for the general population to read in Guangming Daily and through the Xinhua News Agency. The People's Daily and the People's Liberation Army Daily soon followed suit. A 5,000 Chinese character essay attacked the two whatevers and sparked a nationwide debate on the criterion for truth. Deng Xiaoping took a clear public stance on the issue. He said, we have encountered a problem, which is that even practice as a criterion for testing truth can become an issue. It's baffling. Deng personally supported and directed the subsequent discussion. At the All-Army Conference on Political Work, held on June 2, 1978, he said, Seeking truth from facts, always proceeding from the reality, and integrating theory with practice is the fundamental point of Marxism and Mao Zedong thought. He went on, We must set things right and cast off our mental shackles so that we can truly emancipate our minds. Deng was determined to turn the party's attention to economic construction as quickly as possible. On his return from a trip to the DPRK in September 1978, he visited Northeast China. There, he sowed the seeds of change, urging cadres to emancipate their minds and seek truth from facts. At the same time, Chen Yu, Ye Jianying, Li Xianyan, and other old revolutionaries expressed their support for the debate on the criterion for testing truth. The floodgates of emancipated thought were opening. The debate broke the fetters of leftist opportunism and inspired people everywhere to begin putting matters to right. In the 1970s, science was advancing rapidly around the world, bringing new opportunities. By 1978, Microsoft had already been in business for two years, and in Germany, digital printing was replacing printing presses. The world's first mobile phone network was already up and running, and 70% of homes in the developed countries had television. The European community had adopted the European Currency Unit and the tide of economic globalization was rising. The four Asian tigers were growing rapidly, with Singapore's GNP per capita already reaching 3,000 US dollars. China, despite being home to a quarter of the world's population, accounted for just 1.8% of economic output 0.75% of exports. That year, the Chinese government sent delegations on study tours to various parts of the world. In the course of little more than a month, Premier Hu Mu led a delegation to five countries, including France, Switzerland, and West Germany. They visited factories, mines, and ports, the delegation was later given the nickname Vanguard of China's opening up to the world. 
It was with a sense of shock that the Chinese people got their first real view of the world. Highways like those in Western Europe, 30 meters wide and designed for speeds in excess of 100 kilometers an hour, were non-existent in China at the time. Deng Xiaoping was also very active. In the space of two months, he visited six Asian countries, including Japan, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. There, he witnessed at first hand the rapid regional development. The things Deng saw and heard while visiting developed capitalist countries made him realize that if China was to catch up with the rest of the world, it had to find a path of development adapted to its own situation. On November the 10th, 1978, a central working conference was held in Beijing, attended by more than 200 senior cadres. The main agenda item was agriculture and economic planning. The first three days were spent discussing how the focus of party work should be shifted in 1979 to socialist modernization. On the third day, November the 12th, Chen Yun pointed out that stability and unity were key if the shift in focus was to be smooth. But how could stability and unity be achieved? The major historical issues still lingering from the Cultural Revolution and the mistakes of the leftists still had to be resolved, as did the question of the merits and demerits of certain key leaders. His speech elicited an immediate and strong response. It was included in its entirety in the meeting's final briefing. Every participant expressed a strong wish to correct, once and for all, the mistakes of the Cultural Revolution. It was a historic turning point when the CPC faced new opportunities and needed to solve a number of new problems and set a course for development. Deng Xiaoping approved of and supported Chen Yun's opinion. The meeting ended with a commitment to setting things right in the ideological, organizational, and political spheres. At the closing ceremony, Deng Xiaoping gave an important speech under the title, Emancipate the Mind, Seek Truth from Facts, and Unite as One in Looking to the Future. You The speech was like a strong wind, clearing away the clouds that had cast a shadow in the minds of the Chinese people. It pointed out the development direction China should take and became the de facto work report for the third plenary session of the 11th Central Committee of the CPC. That historic meeting was convened in Beijing five days later, on December the 18th, 1978. 
party and the country were at a historic crossroads. China had to decide where would it go from here. The meeting decided that the party and country should shift their focus to socialist modernization and concentrate on the strategic decision to reform and open up. These decisions, which concerned the country's fate, reflected the objective needs of the era, as well as the urgent hopes of the party, the army, and every ethnic group. The meeting was a milestone in the history of the Communist Party of China. It launched the great socialist programs of reform and opening up, and building socialism with Chinese characteristics. China had entered a new era of socialist development. Following the meeting, the party began a systematic effort to right the wrongs of the past. Two days after it ended, Peng Dehuai and Tao Zhu were rehabilitated post-mortem, and a memorial service was held for them. In February 1980, the fifth plenary session of the 11th CPC Central Committee rehabilitated Liu Xiaoqi. With the wrongly accused being rehabilitated and old mistakes being corrected, many wounds could begin to heal. These moves served as a powerful motivation for the people and created a political atmosphere of stability and unity in which socialist modernization could advance. In Xiaoping government and the Chongpo 果断结束，以阶级斗争为纲，重新确立马克思主义的思想路线、政治路线、组织路线。从此，我国改革开放拉开了大幕。If 1949 was the year the Chinese people stood up. Then 1978 was the year China embarked on the road to prosperity. The destiny of hundreds of millions of Chinese people was being transformed, along with that of their country. was the year when China embarked on a new course in the construction of socialism with Chinese characteristics.